an angry entitled old jerk, decides that he's gonna hassle me for taking too long in removing a hive of angry bees from his home. But despite the fact that I told him that he needs to leave the area for his safety, this guy was only concerned about how much I was charging him for my job, refusing to take my safety precautions seriously. Here's what happened. Okay, this just happened and I'm honestly still blown away. For starters, I'm a bee remover and a bee relocator, and I keep the bees that I remove and have many hives, and I bill myself as an ethical bee remover. So I have this job at a residence, and the bees have been ignored long enough that it's now become a massive hive. I talked to the entitled old man that I was meeting with, and I let him know what to do as I set things up. We have a nice chat, and it all seems to be going very well. I get close to the bees, and I realize that they are very defensive. They're dive bombing and attacking, and I'm not even close to them yet. I then go through my safety process of blocking off a wide area with caution tape and signage. I talk to dog walking neighbors, warning them to stay away, and I talk to both neighbors, telling them to keep their kids and dogs inside. And this is all normal stuff, and it reduces my liability. After I clear space from my ladder, I go up and marker off the area needing to be cut open to expose the bees. Now, they are not having it and putting up a full nasty response. Now, I have measures that I use to capture them from the air, so I pull enough from the air and I move back to get my tools to cut the hive open. Well, I then turned around and I see the entitled old man of this story literally standing there with a shade hat as if that would ever help him with these bees. I tell him, sir, I need you out of the area. Get inside or at least outside the caution tape. He then says to me, for what? You're not even doing anything yet. You haven't done a single thing. At this point, he's a little upset. So I remind him that these are dangerous bees and I need everyone out of the area. Since I charge hourly and I'm not cheap, even though he is, he thinks that this is a good time to come out and complain about how long it takes to get set up. But here's the thing. I was never going to charge him more than what I estimated, but he's only concerned about the bottom line. Meanwhile, I'm concerned about getting sued if this guy catches a full face of stinging insects. After some back and forth about how dangerous this hive is and how I'm making sure nobody walks into my perimeter, despite this moron standing in the middle of it, I just straight up quit. I tell him that I'm not doing it. I don't need to be exposed to liability, all because this guy is dumb enough to stand within my perimeter. I start packing up quickly because I'm pissed as bees chase me around in my suit with the owner's son coming out to try and salvage it. I told him that I don't need a non-expert critiquing what my process is and that I'm leaving right now. Have fun dealing with your angry bees. I tell them whoever you get to come out here to deal with it, please let them know how dangerous I said these bees really are. He asked me if they owe me anything and I just said no. I am not accepting anything from them because I don't want to be on the hook somehow if these bees go bananas on somebody. The thing is, as soon as very defensive bees feel vibrations from power tools, they go absolutely crazy and it is very slow going getting them out of the air. You cut a bit of the hive, you process it, and then you spend 10 minutes sucking mean bees out of the air to keep the defensive cloud as small as possible. And this is the only way to keep people safe. This entitled old jerk shut down the one bee remover around that can deal with bees this defensive and still keep the public from getting stung, including this old entitled jerk. So to that old jerk, I hope you enjoy your angry hive of bees because I believe that you definitely deserve it. Wow, who in their right mind would have bees literally outside their home and then hassle the guy that's going to be removing said bees and be like, wow, you're taking too long. You haven't even done anything yet. What are you waiting for? It's like, dude, what are you talking about? Do you want these bees removed or not? Now is not the time to get weird about this and be like, wow, this is taking so long. I can't believe you. So you know what? I honestly don't blame you for quitting that job because that guy absolutely sounded like a liability. I mean, he was standing right next to this angry hive of bees and actually hassling you without any protective equipment on his body. Like he could have gotten seriously hurt or worse. And that's honestly not something that you deserve to be liable for in the slightest. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for moving out of my mom's house and into my dad's house after my mom has made it very clear that she favors my stepsister over me. Here's what happened. I'm a 16-year-old male and I moved in with my dad five months ago. My parents always shared custody of me and they broke up while my mom was pregnant with me, but I made the decision to move in with my dad permanently. Now, I did this for many reasons, but for starters, I like my dad's house better. He's around more and it honestly feels like I'm home when I'm with him. Also, I was kicked out of my bedroom at my mom's place because her husband's daughter moved in with her boyfriend because they were expecting a baby, so I got moved into the office on a couch. And then the boyfriend broke my school laptop because he 
use the office to work from and his reaction as well as my mom's stepdaughter's reaction was that I was a whiny brat for thinking that he should replace it. They also tossed out stuff that was in my old room still because mom told me stuff wouldn't fit in the office with me. I was also expected to help take care of my mom's stepdaughter who is literally a total stranger to me. And to top it all off, my mom's husband is kind of a jerk and was way worse after his daughter moved in. My decision to move out was controversial with mom. She was upset and angry at first and then the upset faded and her anger kept. I was asked a million questions and I was called spoiled when I explained my reasoning, especially at the loss of my room. I was told that she would be living there and I was only there part time. So to them, it made no sense to put all of them and a baby in the office. My mom has wanted me to go to her house and see her, but I've just not done it and it's been months since I went to her house. Her stepdaughter's baby was born too and a party was thrown afterwards, but I didn't even go even though my mom invited me. She called me after the party and asked where I'd been and I told her that I was out with my friends. She told me that we had a new baby in the family, but I told her that the baby isn't my family any more than her stepdaughter is. I told her that I miss nothing and I wasn't going to be part of that. She told me I am whether I like it or not and then she told me that she misses me and wants me over for dinner some nights at least, but I just told her no. She then told me that I should be grateful to have her and that one day I will regret this. So seriously, am I the jerk in this situation? Because at this point I'm very frustrated and I just don't know what to do. Okay, for starters, I don't think you're the jerk because it sounds like your mom made a very clear choice of your stepsister over you and she made this choice over and over again. She's literally pushed you to the side in an office space and basically said that because you don't live there full time, you don't deserve to have a room of your own. But it's like, how in the world is that fair for you in the slightest? You're already split between two homes. Like if I was in your shoes, I would have done the same thing and moved in with my dad. At least there you feel like you're at an actual home because right now it seems like your mom's treating you like an object and she moves you around whenever it's inconvenient to have you in her way. So no, you are definitely not the jerk. I don't blame you in the slightest for choosing to go with your dad. And if I was in your shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. Am I overreacting? After my husband gave out his number to a woman who was blatantly hitting on him. Because right now I am very frustrated and at this point I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. To start things out, my husband and I have been married for three years and moved to a new community a few months ago. We have recently started working out to become fitter and healthier and both of us have lost some weight. My husband was bullied a lot as a kid for not being good looking and has some very deep insecurities related to his looks. I am also an attractive woman and all his friends told him that I'm out of his league when we started dating. I regularly reassure him that I find him very attractive. He also doesn't like wearing jewelry, not even his wedding ring. Now, I've known this since we met and never really cared if that's his preference. The other day, he had an errand to run and went to take the electric vehicle out of the charging spot. He then noticed a woman across the parking lot checking him out for a minute or two. She then walked over to him and said, oh, is this your car? I was just wondering. She then asked him for his name, introduced herself, told him that she recently bought the same electric vehicle and then asked him for his number in case she needs help with anything. And much to my surprise, he actually gave it to her. Now, I wasn't there during this interaction. He called me right after very excitedly and told me that someone just hit on him. Now, I was very excited for him too. And I was teasing him about being hot stuff until he told me that he gave her his number. When he heard the change in my tone, he said he didn't realize that she was hitting on him until after he gave her his number and he thought that maybe she was actually asking for it because she might need some help later on. To be fair, he is a helpful person and will even offer help to strangers if he sees them struggling and he has the ability to help them. But he's also someone who doesn't like to hand out his number to random people, even while signing up for things, let alone some random person who he's spoken two sentences with. I find it hard to believe that he registered her checking him out from across the parking lot, that she walked over for no reason, struck up a conversation for no reason, and asked for his number very quickly out of nowhere, but didn't realize that she's hitting on him until after giving it to her. I think this alone would wouldn't bother me so much, but something he said during our last fight has also made me question things. For context, during our entire relationship and marriage, he has assured me, mostly during and after fights, that he loves me and that he can't live without me, and he will never let go unless I want to leave him. We had a stupid fight last week about chores, and he said that this is not working out. I then asked him to clarify what he meant and what this is. Well, he wouldn't clarify. He just repeated the same thing and implied that he meant the marriage. We talked out the fight, and when I asked him again afterwards, he apologized for saying that and said that he was talking about the chores arrangement and not the marriage, and that he didn't realize that's what I thought. I asked him if it wasn't 
wasn't clear to him, that's what I thought he was referring to, especially based on me asking him that point blank. He then admitted that he knew and that he knew that's what I would think and that he was sorry for making me think that and for feeling that way. He then felt distressed that I didn't believe him and tried to assure me again that he loves me and was never letting me go unless I want to leave. Now, maybe I'm really overreacting and connecting unrelated things, but I'm wondering if until now he felt like I'm a catch and he'd be a fool to let me go. But now that he's getting fitter and someone else has shown interest in him, he's curious to see if it can go further. The girl texted him and he showed it to me, but hadn't replied then or in front of me. And it's not like I don't get hit on, even with my wedding ring on, but I've always shut it down immediately out of respect for him. It's possible he's wondering if the grass is greener on the other side. I could bet good money that no other woman has put up with even 10% of the things that I put up with from him. But that doesn't mean I want him to sit idle and be cheated on, despite suspecting that's the direction things are going in. To be clear, I don't think he's going to sleep with a girl tomorrow, but it's not the implausible to think that he might see some flirting as innocuous until it develops into something more, especially as someone who doesn't see anything wrong with certain things, until I ask him how he'd feel about me doing the same thing to him. So am I overreacting here, or am I actually on to discovering something really bad? What should I do? Okay, I can definitely see where the original poster's coming from, and I can really see where they would be frustrated. Your boyfriend's not an idiot, he's 32 years old, and he really should not have given out his number to that lady who was very clearly hitting on him. Like, that really was a stupid decision on his part, and I don't blame you for getting upset. But when it comes to you saying, oh yeah, there might be something else going on, or this could lead to some kind of cheating scenario of some kind, I personally think that would be taking it way too far. Like, that's all hypothetical situations that are just being made up in your head, and that's not serving anybody in the slightest. So yes, absolutely be upset that he gave his number out, and that he didn't recognize that she was blatantly hitting on him. And if he hasn't done it already, I would really be like, hey, you need to delete that number and block that lady. Because otherwise, that's only going to continue problems between the two of you. Am I the jerk for walking away from my father-in-law's wife after she started speaking negatively about my wife during my sister-in-law's wedding? Here's what happened. So my wife's younger sister got married three weeks ago. For the wedding, my wife filled the role that should have been filled by their mom, but she passed away when my wife was a teenager and her siblings were younger, with my wife eventually stepping up as the family mom. It ruined her relationship with her dad in the process because she had to mother him as well and had to take care of the family. She wanted him to be a better dad than that, but he was not capable at the time. To this day, things are very strained, and my wife's siblings lived with her for a period of time after she left as well. There is some conflict about this because after my wife turned 18 years old and moved out, her dad got remarried. There has always been a tension between my wife and my father-in-law's wife over the role my wife plays and the roles my father-in-law's wife wanted to play. My wife's younger siblings did not end up looking to my father-in-law's wife as a maternal figure and instead continued looking to my wife. And this is something we all know bothers my father-in-law's wife, at least to some degree. And this is why my sister-in-law's decision to have my wife fill the role on her wedding day brought forth some comments from my father-in-law's wife. It was more about the tradition they do in their family, which may or may not be related to a cultural thing in their mom's family. But their family always has the bride spend the night before and right up until the wedding with her mom. They don't leave each other's sides and they help each other get ready together. And my wife did this with her sister. My father-in-law's wife wanted to be part of this and she was upset previously when my wife didn't invite her to do it for our wedding. But it was a bigger deal for my sister-in-law because they lived together for six to seven years. My father-in-law's wife found me during an in-between moment and she told me that my wife must be so happy that she got to keep her out of yet another one of the weddings and how smug my wife wife must be that she wasn't thought of enough to be invited in alongside the two sisters and was basically a plus one and nothing more. I told her I did not appreciate her talking about my wife in that way and she started to make another comment so I walked away from her without saying another word. She stewed on that for the rest of the wedding and days later brought it up to my in-laws and demanded an apology from me. Well, my wife stepped in and told her that I did not owe her an apology for walking away in the way in which I did. So am I the jerk for walking away when my father-in-law's wife started to badmouth my wife? What should I do? No, you are not the jerk, but honestly, if I was in your shoes, I definitely would have said a lot more to her. It's almost like she thought she could go to you as some kind of like confidential conversation and really express how she actually feels about your wife and what's happening at this wedding. As if you were going to keep it a secret or something like that. And that's honestly insane in my opinion, and you definitely do not deserve that. Like, you two are married after all. In what universe would she ever assume that you're not going to talk to her about this or even 
wouldn't begin to take her side in the slightest. But on the other side of that, I totally understand why you walked away and why you didn't choose to stay in the conversation and make some kind of remark. This is your wife's extended family, and it does seem like your father-in-law's wife almost thrives on drama, so I can understand not wanting to like fuel that drama any further than it needs to be. So no, you did the right thing by walking away, because this lady obviously just wanted to cause problems. And that is not your fault in the slightest. My boss wanted to take away the only reason that I stayed at the company. So I decided to get some revenge in a way that would really set me up for a better job in the future. Here's what happened. So I work in an industry that I loathe. I prefer helping people one-on-one to improve their lives however I can, but life brought me to a corporate nightmare full of negativity, an overly ambitious hipster CEO, enough money for swag, but not enough money to hire enough people for each department. So everyone suffers with stupid swag that nobody cares about. And the turnover rate is absolutely wild. I work in an essential, often overlooked section of the company. And here we handle massive volumes of clients who choose our company or leave. And I'm being vague on purpose, but trust me, this is a national company. We handle legal contracts, keeping new clients happy before we send them to their new team and a million other tiny jobs that need to be done precisely or it will ruin other departments and we could lose tons of money. Anyways, all of that is to say that there is not one person in this company that knows every aspect of our specific role and how to keep everything afloat. Well, my team lead decided it was time to leave and pursue her dream career after nearly six years of perfecting this role, with four of those years being with me. And I was the second half of this team. I was very thorough and I focused on procedure perfecting and I was very anxious about making any type of mistake. So between the two of us, we were the backbone of the sector. We really were a dream team. So of course, when she left, she told all the bosses who praised the ground that she walked on that I should get the job. She knew full and well that I hated this place, but I was waiting for something perfect to come along. But she also knew that I'm the one who would hit the ground running. I didn't exactly want the job, but we would all end up suffering and I would end up training without extra pay. So I reluctantly took it. Now, let me tell you the sheer amount of stress of cross training for two weeks for this position while already doing my full duties, which is an extremely stressful job in and of itself and picking up the slack for both of us while she tied up loose ends with me creating far more detailed procedures prior to her leaving already made me so stressed out that I was having chest pains, I was breaking down and I wanted to quit. Now, this being the awful company with horrible leadership that it is, I didn't even get my contract until several weeks after I accepted the job and I discussed the terms and they still haven't backfilled my position. So I am still suffering a few months after I started training. No increased pay for the training and extra work that I had to endure and they chose the start date after the training was done. I have been losing hair, I've been breaking out, I'm having nightmares and bursting into tears and I even had to find a therapist because I've been pushing myself to be the best that I can while also being set up for failure and having zero support. And I care about a job well done but I am just failing no matter how many extra hours I put in on the evenings and the weekends. My mental health is going down the drain. So this is where I decided to maliciously comply. I started work at 7 30 a.m. for four years, and this helped a lot with my work-life balance because I am a single mom and I can be home a bit earlier to take care of them. We also have the option to opt into working an extra 25 minutes each day so that we get a half day every second Friday. Some people don't care about it, but I found this extremely useful, especially for doctor's appointments and to use only a half day vacation for a full day off. This meant that I work from 7.30 a.m. until 4.25 p.m. Now, these two things were the reason that I stuck around this long. These kept me sane and allowed me to be there for my kids as much as I could, as well as still being there fully mentally for them. Well, I was told that if I decide to become a team leader, I have to start at 8.30 in the morning and end at 5 o'clock p.m. I asked if that could be modified at all, and the answer was no. And when I heard that, I was really upset. I'm thinking that I'm already taking on far more stress, and now I have less time with my children too, and the kids see me suffering as much as I try to hide it. I am then told that I am no longer getting a second Friday as a half day either. So no more working the extra 25 minutes a day. Their reasoning was that they needed me here during normal business hours, which literally just doesn't make any sense. For a company who needs me to keep this business going, no one was budging on this. And as someone who already hates this place and feels that no one cares about my mental health and how I have even been injured for this company, I just shut down completely. So I logged into the system to book days off every second Friday and I asked my old team lead to accept them right before she left. And she said that she would gladly do it. So I now have every second Friday off. I don't work the extra 25 minutes a day. I get paid way more and I'm using my title to find a way 
way better job. So basically, I have less work for more money while I hand in my resumes to somebody who might be hiring. And whenever we have a meeting where the boss would ask if they should be aware of any time off, I just smile and remind them that I have the usual every second Friday off as a half day. And they just nod their heads. And I really hope I can find a better job than this sooner than later. Yeah, your job really sucks. These people have absolutely no idea who they're losing because it sounds like you could literally bring this place to a complete standstill if you wanted to. And I also cannot stand jobs who are like, oh yeah, we work together, we're a family. And then they refuse to like hire anybody to help you out or at least cross train literally anybody so that work can get done in a reasonable time frame. Like that just drives me crazy and it only causes more people to quit on the spot. So you know what? Good for you for taking that team lead as well as getting those Fridays off. And hopefully you can find a better job because this place sounds like it absolutely sucks. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.